Have you been wondering what is the proper process for month end? Is there something I should be checking or am I good to go? Well, you are in the right place. If we've never met before, hi, I'm Candice Camper, and I love to help both business owners and bookkeepers create confidence and simplicity within QuickBooks. So today's video is all about what is the month end process. I do have a PDF that you can always get access to at CandiceCamper.com forward slash month end, but we're going to be jumping in in looking at them step by step, um, the most important areas to be checking at the end of your month. So come look over my shoulder. Let's jump into QuickBooks. So when you're in here, a couple things. The first thing that you want to be looking at is what's going on with your accounts receivable. What is going on with your accounts payable? So let's look for first at accounts receivable. So why do we check accounts receivable? What is the purpose of it? Remember that there are three ways to track your income in QuickBooks. And if you are using create invoices, then you have what's called accounts receivable. It's a way for you to track who is going to pay you later. The reason this is so important is it's cash flow, right? Like who owes you? When is it going to come in? And then in a minute, we'll be talking about accounts payable, which is who do you owe and when do you owe it by? So when you go in, you can look at customers or receivables under reports. I will be showing the online in a moment and you can do either aging, summary, or detail. Summary is going to be exactly that. It's more summarized. It's going to be your customer's names. Are they current? How many days out? This is a sample file, so it's further out than most likely yours is, hopefully. You can also look at the details, or there's one extra little bonus uh, report that I'll teach you, which is the open invoices. What I love about this one is it's by customers and then what invoices are open. Now, can you go in and look at their exact inside of the customer center. Yes, you can look at them there as well. Let's go look at the online version and let's go under reports. You can type it in if you want, or you can scroll down and you'll see these are different sections. Who owes you is going to be your accounts receivable. If you star it, it will then populate up here under your favorites. You've probably heard me talk about that in a prior video. So you can go under accounts receivable, aging summary or detail, whichever one you want. You also have open invoices here as well. There you go. So if you're not already and you use invoices, which for online users is going to be right here, you definitely want to be checking this to make sure everything is accurate. So that's the first thing that we want to check. Number two, we want to go in and we want to check our vendors accounts payable. So just as customers is cash flow of who, as I said, owes you and vendors is going to be who do you owe? Now, this is a two step process. I don't recommend it for every business. It depends what you have going on. But if you are using inner bills, then you can come in here and use under vendors accounts payable summary to see who you owe and how far out it is to help you manage your what cash flow. Exactly. If you're an online user, you can go under reports. You can type it in up here under the search, or you can scroll down to what you owe and you can look at your accounts payable, aging detail or summary, whichever one. So you can see who do you owe and how far out before you have to pay them. As I said, this is to manage your cash flow. I also really like the unpaid bills report as well, because it's going to show you just like the open invoices unpaid bills. So go in and check those reports out. Let me know down below in the comments, which of these reports do you love the most? I love teaching reports. It's one of the things I teach inside Commerce QuickBooks, um, just because you really want to be able to manage your business, right? That's the whole point of all these reports. Why use QuickBooks if you're not using it as a tool for your business? Wouldn't you agree? All right. So we checked customers and payables, so receivables and payables. The next thing that I like for you to check is I want you to go in and if you have petty cash, so this is where you have a cash till or you have some cash on hand. You want to go in and make sure that whatever the balance is, if it's supposed to be $500, a thousand, like whatever it is for your business, that that is staying up to date, that all the receipts have been entered, that everything is accurate and been verified. If you use online, yours is going to be, if you want to look for your chart of accounts, it's here under accounting chart of accounts. You want to set this up as a bank account. And you would have it here and you'd go in and you'd verify that everything's been entered properly. This is actually one of the better ways to enter in like cash receipts to make sure you have where you spent it and where it went for tracking purposes. Next, you want to be checking and reconciling your bank accounts 
whether that's checking, savings, whatever you have, every single month, you want to match it, the statement to your QuickBooks. Okay. Let me know below if you are reconciling both on desktop and online. And don't forget, I have this entire checklist that if you're like, oh, I heard her what she said, but I like this in checklist, you can get the PDF version of it, canscamper.com forward slash month end. And you can come in here and you want to just be verifying. And you can find on your online, your reconciliation. There's a few different ways, but you can click here and go in and look at it. Now, remember, reconciliation is comparing what happened at the bank to what happened in QuickBooks. So you're going to go ahead and click on reconciliation and you're just verifying what happened. Make sure you're doing that every single month. Also on your credit card. So bank accounts, credit cards, any type of account that you have to make sure that it matches. I also recommend actually setting up PayPal as its own bank account and reconciling it so that you know exactly where that money went because PayPal is typically used like an actual bank account. So whether you're desktop or online, you want to be doing that. Okay. So make sure you're setting up PayPal as a bank account. You also want to be verifying and reconciling your loans either quarterly or yearly to make sure why, why does that matter? Because you want to break down your principal and interest so that when you go to file your taxes, you're writing off if the interest is a business expense it off on your taxes, right? Okay. Next what we have on our list. It's also on your PDF taxes, accrued taxes. So there are different kinds of taxes that you can get with QuickBooks. You can have payroll taxes, meaning you process your payroll inside QuickBooks and you come in here and you pay it, or you might have sales tax, right? So that says, don't forget to pay your sales tax. Now I will give you a couple tips. One for payroll. If you pay at the end of the month, make sure you've processed your payroll, then pay your taxes. And then if it's a quarterly month, you want to make sure that you've paid your taxes before you file your quarterlies. Why is that? So that it shows all of your payments when you go to file your quarterly. So process your payroll, pay your payroll taxes on a quarterly. Make sure that's all happened before you file your quarterlies. Why do I say that? Because I haven't always done that and I found it so much easier. So make sure you do that. And if you are an online user, your payroll is going to be here for processing payroll. Your taxes are going to be here under taxes. If you are processing payroll, this is a sample file, so it doesn't have it in here, but your payroll tax will be here as well as your sales tax. You need to process these properly because if you try to process them as a normal payment in QuickBooks, not these types of payments, it won't actually work properly or report properly as well. So make sure you are doing that. Next, you want to check in with your clients and make sure there's nothing that they have on hand that they haven't told you about. If you're tracking inventory that you've gone in and done your inventory tracking for the month, for the quarter or for the year, depending on when you do it, um, as well as do they have any cash receipts? Did they make any purchases that you need to get the paperwork, whether it's real estate, there's a HUD one, whether they bought a piece of like, um, equipment, all those things you want to be keeping for two reasons. One, you may owe sales tax if you didn't pay it, depending on what state you're in. And two, you're going to want to have that to enter into your QuickBooks because in a minute we're going to talk about reports and you want to make sure you have it so that when you go see your tax professional and they want to know what was the date of service that you put that equipment in, when did that happen? So if you have this little checklist and you do it monthly, it's going to make it so much easier than if you wait till the end of the year right? Because we forget what we did sometimes two months ago. So you want to make sure that you're doing this. All right. Then you're going to want to go in and two more things that we're going to talk about. You want to look at your profit and loss. If you're not familiar with your profit and loss, I'd highly recommend coming to my customizing QuickBooks workshop. You can go to canscamper.com to look at that, but you're going to want to look at last month in the sample file. I don't have it. But you can also look at this year, last year, all that stuff, year to date. I talk about those types of things in my free training. So I highly recommend checking it out if you're not comfortable. Or if when you do pull your report, you don't feel like it was designed for you. You don't feel like you really understand it. This is the workshop I recommend that you take. And if you are an online user, you're going to want to make sure that when you come in here to your reports, you can always favor them. Don't forget. So these are at the top, but you can always scroll down to look at the business overview and you'll see the profit and losses right there. So what is a profit and loss? It has your income, 
minus your expenses tells you did you have a profit for whatever period of time you selected or a loss. Okay, if it's a negative number, it's a loss. So that's one report. And then the other report, we'll pull it here first while we're in here, is the balance sheet. The balance sheet fills in the gaps. So income and expense is only a portion of the equation in accounting. The rest of it is also going to be your assets, liability, owner's equity. So you go in here, we talked about like, where do your bank accounts sit, right? We verified that. Do we have our fixed assets? Did we add in what we purchased? We talked about that as well. Do we owe accounts payable? Remember, we checked our bills or see if you owed and if they're accurate. You're verifying your credit cards. You're verifying your payroll liabilities, your sales tax, and all your loans. That's everything here. And then the last piece of your balance sheet is going to be your equity, your retained earnings. And I actually have a video on that as well. I also linked in the PDF some of the other videos that I have, like on ePay and things like that if you need them. So don't forget to grab the PDF. The other thing that I would say is closing date. So this is actually something I get asked often. Let me show you before I do how to pull the balance sheet for desktop users. It's going to be right here. And see, same thing, same information on this one. Now, closing date. This is actually something I get asked often. Do I have to close it or not? QuickBooks will do your closing entry at the end of your accounting period, meaning if your calendar year, it's going to be December. If you're a fiscal year and you end mid-year, it'll do a closing entry for you. But there is one thing you can do in QuickBooks, and I have a tutorial video that will give you step-by-step, -step, and I'll show you a little quick sneak peek. It's called the close set closing date, which is just where you set a period of time where you can't go back and enter transactions before. This is great to do at the end of the year after you've filed your taxes, all transactions have been entered, so that way nobody can go back and change anything because you want your profit and loss to match what you filed in the previous years so that every year get audited and it just makes life easier. You can also choose to do this throughout the months as you close them as well. So if you're looking for the video for both desktop or online, I will link it here. I'll also put the link inside of the PDF. Let me know. Did this video help you? Do you feel like you have all the pieces you need um, to close your books? Now you know what you could be looking at depending on what features and functions you are using in QuickBooks. If I miss anything that you're doing, will you let me know below? I would love to see it. Share with us any of your brilliant things that you do on a regular basis. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to like this video if it has helped you. Share it with anybody that you know that is a QuickBooks user who could use this video. And if you want to join me on my workshop, where I'll help you customize your QuickBooks, don't forget to save your seat because we have some live classes coming up. CandiceCamper.com forward slash workshop. Thank you so much for being part of my community. Um, you can always watch this video again if you want to see these tips. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.